Welcome to the second in a series of introductory videos for the SolidCam CNC programming software. Today's topic will be Tooltable. Tooltable is essentially the list of tools you're going to use in your operations as you program inside SolidCam. So let's begin by creating a global or archived Tooltable. We'll go to Tools, SolidCam, Tool Library, Create Tool Library, and we'll choose the type of tool library that we wish to create. Now, we have milling, turning, and mill turn. Essentially all this is, is in the milling, you're only gonna be making milling tools. In turning, you're only making turning tools. And in mill turn, it gives us the ability to make both. So for today, I'm just gonna do both. You give your tool library a name. In this case, it defaults to tool table. I'm gonna click okay. And we are now inside of the tool table screen and we can choose to add tools. So in the bottom left corner, I'm gonna add a milling tool. And we have the categories of tools that we can create. In this case, let's start with a flat end mill. Once I choose the type of tool, I can now define the tool. I'll give it a tool number. In the description screen, I can give a description of the tool. This will pop up in your G code as a script that your operator can read to, the, to basically decipher which one is tool one. In this screen, in this window, we can actually put symbols, anything we want to use to define this tool. Further along here, we can provide dimensions. I'm just gonna define my tool as a half inch tool with a cutting length of two inches. If these numbers don't make sense, according to this icon on the side here, so in this case, my cutting length being two inches cannot be higher than my shoulder length. It will actually give me this error in the bottom left corner. So I'll just go and correct that. Let's make that two and a quarter. So now that tool is correct, that tool is defined. It is now part of this global archive tool library. Going forward in any milling operation or any mill turn operations, I can pull from this list and add that to an active tool library. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and make a turning tool. So add turning tool, choose the type of turning tool. In this case, our turning tools, we can define them as composite tools or solid tools. Really the only difference here is under the composite tool, I'm gonna define my insert type and my shank type. And once I do that, I provide dimensions. Now for the insert, it's very easy. It follows the standard nomenclature. So if I were to just make a quick CNMG insert, I'm just pulling from the list, looking for standard sizes. And there we are, CNMG 432, and that'll show us up there. Now, both in milling and turning tool definitions, we have tool data. This allows us to put in feeds and speeds specific to this tool, but they are not specific to the machine or the material. So they are essentially placeholders until you get into the operation level where you'll put in your specific feeds and speeds for that operation, whether you're doing roughing or finishing. Under the milling tools, we actually distinguish between feeds for roughing or general use and finishing. Likewise, for the uh, the milling tools, if you're doing any kind of eye machining toolpath, 2D or 3D, there's an eye data table where you can provide the material of the end mill and the helical angle of the end mill. Uh, for both turning and milling, you can provide, you can define a holder. Now, SolidCam comes with a series of default holders, various sizes for milling. If you have a custom holder, give us a call to make the export line and we can help you to define the custom shape holder. Likewise, for a custom tool shape, if you have a sketch inside SOLIDWORKS and you'd like to define a custom tool, once again, give us a call to the main text for line and we can show you how to create a shape tool. These two tools are now added to an, uh, a library. I've created them from scratch. But if I have our, another archive library that I'd like to cherry pick tools from, I can do that as well inside of this window. Just go to Import Tools. SOLIDCAM comes with a series of default libraries that you can also use in your operation level, or here I can cherry pick from. So for instance, look, let's look under the general library for a quarter inch ball nose. So under my tool type, I'll click on the triangle to get the filter, and I'm gonna filter these results to only show ball noses. I can further filter the result by diameter and put in my quarter inch that I'm looking for. The only tool in this library that satisfies those tool results is tool 83. I'd like to add that to tool library I'm currently creating. So I'll click on import selected. 
I can either import it with the tool library or the tool number it currently has, in this case, tool 83, or I can import it and uh, it'll get the positioning of my current library. In this case, let's do positioning. So when we return to my library here, it now is tool three. Okay, so those are the ways to set up a global library. Let's see what happens on the operation level. So I'm just gonna exit this operation, or that to exit the library, and let's go and open up one of my parts. So inside of CAM project, we'll go to tool. We're looking at a tool library specific to this file, to this CAM project. These are tools I added as I was programming along. Um, if I wanted to pull from the archive that I just created or the other archives that come with SideSolidCAM, I can do the same thing again, just going to import tools and find those tools. Now in this case, I'm only looking at turning tools because I'm inside of a turning project. This interface is similar to the one we were just looking at when we were creating tools, and that's by design because you can continue to create tools. In this case, I can add more turning tools in the bottom left corner if I need to. Uh, these tools, they are blue and black, indicating that they're either currently being used in operations or they're just uh, placeholders. They're not being used anywhere in the operation. And you can filter these results using these options up here. All the blue tools are tools being used in operations. I can filter just those. This third icon is any unused tools, black tools. Okay. Now, let's take a look at tool seven, and we can see how we can mount these tools, specifically in turning or mill turn. So there's a button here called mounting. If we open that up, new to 2016, you can now see the entire turret, all the tools, and you can actually toggle those on and off with these buttons. So in this case, we're turning off the machine, we can see all the tools. I could turn off all the tools if I like, and so on. Um, now, especially with mill turn, you're gonna be concerned about the mounting of the tool. So in this case, we'll look at the top left corner here, and we have four directions to put this tool. In addition, we have additional angles if we need to, to put them at any kind of angled location. But specifically, let's focus on just the, uh, the direct location. Currently, tool seven is a drill pointing right down the center line of the spindle. Uh, but if I were doing mill turn and I wanted to drill on the circumference of the part or the OD of the part, I would need the tool to come from the positive X direction relative to this coordinate system right here. So all I have to do is click on the positive X and now tool seven, is pointing in the positive direct, positive X direction. Okay, so that is the tool table on the operation side. And just at the beginning of the video, we created a global library, an archive library that we can pull from for any of our CAM projects. If you have any further questions regarding this topic or any topics you see in the video, you can always give us a call at 1-866-975-1115 extension two, or you can continue to watch the series of videos for the other topics. Thank you for watching.